Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new. My name is Lil and today we are running some errands. I'm actually headed out the door. I need to rush to the tailor because it's spooky season and I have two parties that require me to be in cosplay. So I'm taking my fabric to the tailor to get them made. I know she might be like, what the hell is this? And I'll be like, ah, but it's okay. It's fine, we're just having a good time. So yeah, let's go do that. <laughs> so, if it's the same size now. Maybe for, for the tailor's one, it will be a bit, I don't know how you do it, you do it, I don't know. Because the tailor's one, it's at the end, it's a bit like, it's like this. Yeah. Uh, but it's like, a mm -hmm. bit, that is one but, but the jacket, it's just straight. Okay, a jacket, it's straight. After the tailor, I went to Bonanza to meet up with my friend who's getting married and my other friends, so that we could all help her relax before she gets married by going to a lovely spa. Blame the ground when I started to fall I only miss your voice when I decline your calls So I'll go back to the sidewalk But I think I've walked too much in the heart of St. Paul It used to be big now it feels so damn small But it works to make my mind talk Guys, I just got a massage, steam room My skin looks so baby But like, yeah, sorry I couldn't take you with me, guys I was naked, so yeah Don't wake me in the morning I wanna sleep some more and look what you started Don't shoot, they'll think it's war My dearest departed And it shook me to my core Don't know where my heart is I'm too busy searching for yours Spent so many hours thinking What if you leave? So when you finally do I've already processed the grief Guys, if you're traumatized by cleavage I suggest you gotta click out this video because it's too hot. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't wear a top over this sports bra. I can't. Yeah, so it's the next day and it's actually nighttime now. Um, my day got away from me and now I have to do my laundry and wrap this video up. I know it's like really short, you guys like. But there was only three minutes of content in that ESA mind, but I've kind of just felt some type of way like not really like not really feeling the best so but i want to explain why so i was watching back the footage with me and my tailor and she has known me for all my life her name is valise and i'm sure you noticed that in the video i'm she's speaking bemba and i'm responding in english and for the people that know me yeah it's not a big deal but a lot of people get very surprised yes and i just want to confirm no i do not know how to speak bemba but yes i can understand most of it and i'm actually very insecure about that fact because i am full bemba both my parents are bemba and before you start trying to you know drag my parents or say all those cliche phrases that I've heard all my life like you're lost or you know just weird shit about me not being able to speak my language um, I want people to understand how it was growing up like back 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 in the day before President Sata decided to bring local languages back in the schools when i was very young we moved to the we moved to england 
and I was about I was about three years old when we moved to England. We moved to a place called Stoke on Trent, and obviously, I was speaking English there. And I know, like a lot of people have grown up abroad and they still speak their language, but you have to understand that a lot of people in my parents' generation felt like if you if your kid speaks English very well then it means that you your child is intelligent or you know like it's just like it was like the trendy thing and a lot of schools actually jumped on that bandwagon because I mean colonialism our minds were still heavily colonized and people just were like you know i know a lot of people that can't speak their language and most of them went to the same schools i did when i came back to zambia but anyway so yeah yeah so we lived in uh we lived in england and i could understand bemba because my mom and dad and their friends would speak bemba obviously and i would pick up words here and there and whenever i would try to speak them i was discouraged and i totally understand and my mom had this friend as well she was also she was an african but she was not zambian so she's nigerian and she also where she came from she was heavily still internally colonized and she believed her kids should speak english they must sound english they must sound british and whenever i would go to zambia on holiday i would come back with a zambian accent so yes this is why i have a zambian accent but i can't speak them but i know it's weird so i'll come back with a zambian accent and my my aunt who also is an african lady was like how can you be taking this child to come back primitive <laughs> guys when i tell you that africa has a long way to go in as much as yes there's so much progress we're so proud of our heritage and everyone we are singing our songs in our tribal languages is fine but growing up way way back when when i was growing up everyone wanted to be european or american including our parents so yeah so it would be hard because i'll try to say a word in bemba and I remember this, I bet you like, but you were like literally three, four, five. How do you remember? Like, I remember. You never forget trauma. <laughs> I love my parents, please. But like, yeah, so every time I try and say a word in Bemba, I would be met with, what are you saying? That's not a real word. Is that, that's not a real word. If the word is insert English word of that word. There's no such word. So I would be so gaslit. <laughs> I would be so gaslit as a child and I but I'm like I'm understanding the words coming out of your mouth but when I try to say these words I'm being told that these words are not real words so can you imagine so growing up yes I understood because in as much as my parents wanted me to speak English when they were shouting at me they were shouting at me in Bemba because when you're angry you're angry and the language you are most fluent in is the language you're going to scream in so I understand Bemba for the most part but a lot of people don't even understand you know and before you even ask i can't speak nyanja and i can barely understand nyanja so anyways back to the story yeah so that really was the building blocks for the bimba that i do understand and when we came back to zambia when i was like seven um i went to inquazi and inquazi is like a trust school which i guess is private school or whatever and you know no one was speaking vernacular there everyone was speaking english all the students were encouraged to speak english our parents were told that your children should speak english so that they learn to be constructive members of society because apparently vernacular at the time meant that you'd be a thug or you would be um uncultured or whatever i don't know but still at home i would hear my parents speaking and you know 
if you hear things in that they still stick i guess and then after that i went to catholic school uh, catholic school they took it a step further i'm not gonna mention the names because i don't wanna get in trouble i i'm sorry to say i do not appreciate catholic nuns or sisters because they did a whole lot of fucked up shit to us that can be a story time one day if you want but those of you that know the schools i went to that were catholic yes both of them were like full of shit so yeah went to catholic school you know catholic catholics know how to punish kids so when we spoke they had this thing <laughs> they had this thing called a bemba speaking tag okay and you, you didn't have to just speak bemba you could speak any local language or whatever we called it a bemba speaking tag because where i was bemba was the most popular language that people would speak and there's mosquitoes in my room you guys and they're like attacking me anyway so it literally was bright neon orange and it said i cannot speak english and sometimes words they you know i'm a zambian i know how to use certain isms even though i can't speak a full constructive sentence of bemba i know how to speak certain isms so i'll i'll say them from time to time and i'll find myself wearing that tag and then at the end of the week we would our names would have been written down in a book and would be punished and it was usually hard labor because we love it we love making children dig in a forest we love it so much but like yeah and it was just yeah like after i finished high school our president at the time michael sata came into power and then now you know everyone is like hey we should speak our language each province was teaching the most common language spoken in that province in their schools and now everyone was kids are getting this skill that i was never allowed to have and people would be if they speak to me in bemba or and i answer them in english they'll be so offended so insulted but, and they'll be like what, what, what's wrong with you you're lost how can you not speak your language what was your mother doing what was your father doing what was your grandmother doing then my grandmother was a teacher in the colonial days she's spoken to me in english since i could remember and guys you people don't understand the extent that colonialism had on the psyche of people growing up in the colonial days and i think we are always trying to compare to slavery and make it seem like it wasn't a big deal like we still lived here and we were fine and we we're kicking with the colonial masters and having a great time no we weren't people our cultures were being stripped from us you know everyone was trying to to find the best way to survive during those times so there's a lot of trauma that comes with that and i feel like my grandma just wanted me to have the best advantage and at that time it was speaking english really well and it was so irritating because even when i went back to england to do my university you know <laughs> i'd be speaking to to these people and they'll be like oh okay uh, where are you from and i'm like they'll expect me to say like a town in the uk but i'll be like oh i'm from zambia and then they're like wow you speak english so good and I'm like, yeah, I speak English well. And then they'll be like, what language do you actually, what's the, your, what language is your, like your country's language, you know? And I'd be like, English. <laughs> because our national language is English. Because I mean, which, 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 which language are we going to pick and say this is the language of the whole of Zambia? We've got 72 tribes and 128 languages in Zambia. I think that's what they used to teach us back in the day. And it's just like, I don't know what to tell you sir at the bus stop it's english and they'll be very disappointed because it and another thing that would frustrate me is when i had to go to university i had to to write um 
that stupid english exam when the only language i can speak literally my first fucking language is english and i'm just like you know what i'm dead so yeah i just started feeling a bit low but you know valise knows me she still speaks to me in bimba she understands english and we communicate fine and she still makes my stuff ever since i was a little girl so yeah that's basically why just in case you're wondering why i'm responding to rallies in english and i think the thing is people always say but if you understand why can't you speak it's the trauma like the words can't even leave my mouth you have to understand that years and years of being told that no you need to speak english speak, speaking english means that you are what and every time you try and speak your language it's met with resistance and gaslighting man because everyone like i feel like we need to give our parents grace because in as much as they seem to be harsh or whatever they're just scared they're scared for us they do they feel like they have to do what's best for us in the ways that they know how we always have to remember that parents are they are living life for the first time and they are also they also make mistakes and my my, my mom has come to apologize and she's like i wish i knew what i what i know now back then and things would have been different because she speaks to me in bimba now and i respond in english <laughs> and she does wish that she had not given in to peer pressure and yeah but here we are so yeah i'm feeling some type of way because it's an insecurity of mine and now everyone knows <laughs> because it's obvious when someone is responding in english it means that they can't speak the language so yay so anyway i'm gonna cheer up it's spooky season and I'm going to try and make some fun spooky season content. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.